Guys, so a common question I've been getting asked is, how low can I safely discharge my solar RV or van battery? And a lot of people are scared to over discharge them because even if you over discharge them once, you can cause permanent damage. And if you keep over discharging them more than what they're rated for, you can cause um, a lower life. And so instead of having 10 or 12 years out of your battery bank, you're gonna only be able to use it for one or two years. And so if you know the factors involved, um, there are a lot of factors with batteries though, and I, I really don't want to get into the chemistry of it, but I'm going to hit on the main factors that every RV or van dweller needs to know. And these factors will determine the life of the battery and the performance. And so the first determinant factor is going to be the battery type. You need a true deep cycle battery. These batteries are made to discharge to very low voltages safely. And this is because they're made differently. So when you have a marine battery or a car battery, they have spongy lead plates. And this is great for high cranking amperage where you want a lot of discharge and you need surface area for the chemical reaction to occur so you can make a lot of electricity fast. But these can only depth of discharge and that's how much you can safely discharge a battery. Only two to 5%. If you have a true deep cycle battery, you can safely discharge it 80% down. So that means that you can go down to 20% capacity and it will not have much damage. But the thing is, is no matter what, even if you have a deep cycle battery, whether it's lithium or an AGM sealed battery, the life cycle will decrease if you depth of discharge excessively. So if you depth of discharge down to 20% every day, you're probably going to give out 500 cycles out of the best battery bank for deep cycle charging out there. But if instead you use it for down to like depth of discharge about 30 to 50%, you're gonna get thousands of cycles and your batteries will last for years. So in choosing a deep cycle battery, I recommend just getting an AGM sealed solar application battery and that's it, call it a day. I have the most popular ones on Amazon on my website. I've been using them for years. I have used refurbished forklift batteries, other deep cycle batteries I put in series that were older. I've used different kinds of marine batteries that were hybrid systems. They are all horrible. You need an AGM deep cycle battery or you have a lithium battery. Lithium batteries are good, but you have to make sure that it's highly rated because a lot of the battery management systems for some of the cheaper ones are crappy. So what you need to do is invest and get the right one. So keep in mind, AGM sealed batteries and lithium are costing more when you first initially buy them. But when you look at the depth of discharge and you look at the cycle life, it's actually much, much cheaper than an automotive battery. The next factor to consider is the charge rate of the battery. And if you charge charge a battery faster than what it's rated for, it's going to give it off as excess heat and that will degrade and permanently damage your battery. So what you want to do is charge the battery at what it's rated for. Most AGM deep cycle sealed lead acids are going to be around 30 amps and you need to look on your battery and see what it can handle. So when I determine the size of my solar system, I think, hey, my solar system is at most going to give 30 amps. So I can use a 30 amps charging capability battery. If you use a tiny battery with a large solar system, what's going to happen is you're going to over discharge the battery sometimes, and then your solar system is inadvertently going to charge your battery too quickly and it can cause damage to it. This is why you need a large battery bank. I think personally that it's much more safer to have a large battery bank and a smaller solar solar system if you cannot afford otherwise. And a lot of people like solar panels and they say, I'm gonna just throw a thousand watts on the roof and they don't think about the battery bank and their battery bank is too small. That is not smart. And another reason why is because you're not getting much usable electricity out of that. When you have a thousand watt solar system in a tiny little sealed battery, it's going to charge in about 20 minutes to an hour. And guess what? The excess electricity is going to be given off as heat because you're not using it. If you have a smaller solar system and you have a large battery bank, it can slowly charge throughout the day and do a full complete charge cycle. And that is ideal. When you do fast charge cycles all the time, it's going to heat and cool, heat and cool, and it's gonna degrade your battery. So what you want is a very large battery bank so that all the batteries can charge at an ideal rate, which is a slow, low current. 
Also keep in mind this all changes depending on the ambient temperature. When it's cold outside, you have lower amperage potential, but you have a longer lifespan of the battery. You have more amp hours. But when it's hot outside, it has a higher discharge rate, but you have less amp hours or capacity. So to summarize, buy a actual deep cycle battery that is designed for deep depth of discharge applications such as solar system. Next, you should have a solar system that is not excessively big for your battery bank. Try to make as big of a battery bank as your vehicle can allow for. The problem with this is that batteries are heavy, so try to get whatever you possibly can size-wise and cram it into your RV or van. This is why lithium batteries are starting to look very good right now is because they're cheaper if you look at the full lifespan, depth of discharge, and use of the battery and they are very lightweight. I want lithium batteries, but I bought really nice AGM sealed, sealed batteries, so I'm waiting till I get lithium batteries. Also, when it comes to lithium batteries, when it comes to charge rate and discharge rate, it changes depending on the battery. And so if, if your battery gets really hot and you keep charging it, it's going to degrade it really fast, a lot easier so than an AGM deep cycle battery, but it depends on how big the battery is and also how many cells are in the lithium battery because the more cells mean that there's more surface area so it can handle a higher charge current. Some lithium batteries can high, handle hundreds of amps, like they're insane, but it's how they're designed. And to give you a rough estimate of how big your battery bank should be, um, look up you know the charge current rate of the batteries that you wanna buy, and then look at your solar system. And for every single 100 watt panel you have, call it six amps. And so if I have 400 watts of solar panels on my roof, I'm going to have 24 amps. In 24 amps, you can safely charge most deep cycle batteries. So if you have an AGM deep cycle battery, which is a 30 amp safe charge capability battery, then you can easily use 400 watt solar system with. Also, charge controller wise, if you have a cheap pulse width modulation co charge controller or a PWM, it's simply just an on and off switch. It doesn't, it does only bulk charging. It doesn't do float charging. It doesn't do all the fancy stuff that a um, MPPT charge controller does. So that's a Another thing that you need to do is switch out your charge controller because those ones suck. You can buy them for $10 on eBay, they work, but they're horribly inefficient and they're not going to help your batteries, especially if you have expensive batteries. So buy an MPPT charge controller today before you let it damage your battery. So what voltage can you actually discharge your battery down to? Um, if you just got done charging your battery, you're going to have what's called a surface charge. So even if you use a battery a lot, it will show 13 volts and you'll be like, it's fine, but it's not fine. With solar systems, it's hard to use the voltage for that. So what you want is a shunt and it's an amp meter and it tells you how many amps are going in and out of the battery. It won't tell you the state of charge and you need another system for that, a more advanced shunt that shows electrons going in and out and it calculates the total capacity of the battery but you get a really good idea with just a voltmeter and a basic cheap shunt that's like $18 as compared to like $200. So usually in the afternoon when my surface charge is not existent what I usually do is just discharge down to 12.4 volts. I have a large system though and I want to use this thing for like 15 years or something like that. So I'm, I'm not discharging it that much because I want a very long life cycle battery. But you can safely discharge no problem an AGM deep cycle battery down to about 12.2 or 12.3. You're not at 50% until you're at 12.1 volts. And 12.1 volts is safe too. It's just that the more depth of discharge you use, the lower the cycle life of the battery and the less amount of years that you can get out of that battery. So I personally like having a big battery bank and I, I depth of discharge it down to 12.4 volts. That is mine. And so in this chart right here, you can see the actual voltage and what is safe. Um, take a good look at it. I'll have a link in the description below so you can look at this more. Now we're going to talk about the importance of not discharging it too much and how you can avoid this problem. First of all, if you have any ghost loads, and I have another video on how to find these. What it is is small little, you know, five amp loads that are going 24 hours a day. 
what can happen is it will be rainy for a week and you won't notice it and it will discharge your batteries all the way to an unsafe voltage and they will be permanently damaged. So the best way that I found for fixing this is I have these little beepers and if you hook these up to drone batteries, you have one cell, two cell, three cell, etc. You just have to use the one cell side in the negative terminal and then these two wires you hook up straight to your battery. And then this little beeper here, you can change the voltage at which the buzzer will give off. And I used to use these for model airplanes and drones and quad rotors so that it tells me from far away if the battery is about to over discharge. And with those kinds of batteries, if you over discharge just a tiny little bit, they're permanently damaged forever and they can catch on fire or they can explode, lots of other things. So use a beeper if your battery system doesn't have it and you don't know what you're doing. Um, use a beeper, especially if you have a small battery bank. Um, beepers are very important. If not though, you should have a voltage monitor on your battery at all times. That is required. And I have mine right there where I can see it at any time. Do not have it in the battery bank section. Do not have it hidden and far away in a closet. You want that thing front and center so whenever you walk in and out of your RV, you can see the current voltage of your system. If you have a lithium battery system, you're going to have what's called a BMS, a battery management system. And what this does is it charges and discharges and does all sorts of different things. It has a thermometer to see you know, what the temperature is next to the battery and it charges your battery to a safe voltage and then it stops and cuts it off. Um, also, when you over discharge it, it will say, hey, this voltage is unsafe and it will start beeping. But not all lithium battery management systems have this. So you are better off just having this anyways and a voltage monitor, no matter what battery you have, just out of safety. Do not depend on the BMS to do everything. Some BMSs are really good and can handle that and, and have little safety features like that, but not all of them, so look into that. There is so much more that we could talk about. I didn't even talk about the chemistry of the battery or gelled or flooded batteries or anything else, but I hope this video gives you guys an idea that the main factors are how low you discharge that battery, how often you discharge the battery, and the charge current. Those are paramount. And if you discharge to 12.4 to about 12.2, if you have a sealed AGM deep cycle battery, you will be totally good. A lot of you guys can get away with 12.1, but I like to be on the safe side. Make sure you get a large battery bank so that your batteries actually handle the charge current coming from your charge controller from your solar system. And let me know if you have any questions. I think I hit everything, but this is a really big topic. So 12.4 volts is what you want to discharge it down. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.